And now, if there are any questions, comments, uh, uh, please, floor is to the audience. Well, at least I have some questions. <laughs> uh, well, the first question, as I promised to Professor Bielecki, concerning using of structural funds, concerning using of structural funds, uh, at least uh, one, two examples of, of, of uh, profits made on these investments in which. Mm. The structural funds uh, in, in whole region uh, is uh, well, let's say, absorbed, and uh, I cannot say about how it is in the in the industry or something like that. But but at the whole university, we have a, a new kind of infrastructure, and also as I uh, shown here on the presentation, there was a one research project. Uh, biomass conversion. This was just from the structural funds done uh, with a cooperation with other institutions in, in Poland. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, there are uh, millions of zloty. I do not have an exact data about what is the profit of the, of the investment already. We put uh, some new instruments. We put the infrastructure, the hard infrastructure, the, the new technology center, and the structural funds was just the, the technical park, scientific technical park in which I saw uh, just on the slides. Thank you very much. Some more questions? Comments? Yes, please, Professor. Konrad Rudzinski, Nofer Institute of Occupational Medicine, uh, Łódź, Poland. Uh, I think that we shouldn't forget uh, talking about the societal challenges, about uh, working place as a very good platform for uh, innovation. Uh, we shouldn't uh, forget that the working place is a, a excellent uh, excellent place for um, creating new vision for health. Uh, because uh, if we would like to uh, be innovative, we have to be healthy at first. This is very, very important. And the, 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 the system um, in Poland and also in other European countries uh, is ready, a system of occupational health care is ready to uh, contribute to this new, new philosophy of uh, well-being uh, at workplace and also well-being through work. Because uh, there is a, we know, especially among young population, how devastating is being uh, jobless. So uh, we have to do everything to create jobs, but when we, we, we have positions or we have jobs, we have to remember that only healthy population can be really productive and innovative. That's my comment for this, uh, for this session. Thank you. Please, Piotr. If I may. Um I think it's going to be one comment, but maybe in two pieces. The comment is economy always wins, no matter what you do. Um, you can create the rules, but if they're against economy, you lose. And one of the examples to me is um, the fluorescent uh, bulbs sold in Europe and sold in the US. You have regulations here. Uh, the incandescent ones are sold right now as heating elements. Uh, there, are, there is a lot of paperwork. The only problem is these guys are expensive. In the US, it's very simple. People buy them because it's economically justifiable. They are three times to four times less expensive than in Europe. The other economic force, and you'll have a good example of that, is we're talking about protection of the EU manufacturers. 
This is really great. You have your bags, right, that you got here. Take a look inside, see where are they made. Any guesses? China. So no matter what we do, no matter what kind of rules we would like to have, economy will rule at the end, and we have to keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Well, linked to what um, uh, Dr. Lassot uh, just said, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> there is also, uh, in my view, another aspect which um, many experts have tried to resolve. Uh, in the economic theory, uh, you make uh, the optimal choice, uh, the rational choice, if you basically turn up to have the maximum of uh, utility for what you decide. Now, what we see, and this is also linked to uh, what Corrad was saying, that in the decision making, there are other aspects. So people basically do not only decide to increase their optimal uh, utility returns, but there are other aspects, and the well-being is one of them. We see, for instance, in the food sector, I mean, they're not definitely price-oriented in some cases, but they go and buy products that they believe they do carry some messages. So there are other aspects. I like to say I do believe that the economics is the driver, but there are other aspects which we might need to look into it. And this, uh, now that we talk about the regions, are also linked to traditional aspects, to territories, which in a way we need to make sure that we vehiculate those uh, through the market with the, making sure that also the prices include such an aspect in. Thank you for this comment. Yes, Christina, please. Uh, I also agree with Mr. Lasota, um, but uh, I don't think there must be a conflict between the economy or being a healthy population. Uh, I mean, there must be a, some sort of um, first mover advantage for those uh, who the, decide themselves to be, for example, the healthiest population in Europe. Uh, and if I take my example again, I mean, if there are a nurse in a small hospital in, in, in in a small town in the western part of Sweden, uh, which find a small solution in her daily work. It could be very, very expensive to, to, to create that idea to, to something that uh, could be useful in the economy. But in the same way, it could be a, a success. Uh, she can be rich. I mean, uh, if, if uh, the different regions uh, in Europe decide themselves to be a kind of first mover advantage in, in uh, different kinds of uh, areas, uh, there could be, uh, uh, I mean, in, in that case, the, there is no conflict between, uh, between the economy and the, the vision of being the healthiest people in in, uh, in the world or in Europe. Yeah. Thank you very much. Some more comments in this session? Well, if not, uh, I would like to ask now our rapporteur to shortly summarize our, our, our session. Please. So it's always a big challenge to uh, summarize, but um, uh, based on the presentations, uh, I would say that uh, Mr. Uh, Di Giulio gave a more uh, overall approach in uh, which he said that uh, one of the main uh, challenges we should address is promoting a challenge-driven uh, approach. And uh, through that also providing effective uh, policy and technology options uh, to these challenges that are also socially optimal. Uh, 
and uh, fostering uh, a comprehensive approach, uh, the member states and stakeholders uh, should uh, be involved towards the bioeconomy strategy. <clears throat> and then we had three, uh, four, of three more regional approaches and then one approach from industry. So if I go to the, um, uh, the perspective from Wutsch, um, there, um, uh, the, the, the the advices from that uh, speech was to continue supporting existing branches and uh, developing uh, uh, technologies, um, and then three uh, on three uh, levels, uh, three levels. Um, advice was given, first for the sh uh, short-term actions that should focus on existing easily available uh, feedstocks for already uh, known uh, technologies. For medium-term actions, uh, we should optimize existing technologies for bioenergy and bioproducts. And for long-term actions, uh, uh, one needs to focus on uh, creating links between bio uh, industries and other branches uh, that have been current or will be future users of biotechnologies. Uh, when we look to the uh, uh, to the presentation on South Moravia, we had a very interesting uh, pro uh, situation in South Moravia uh, ten years ago, in which uh, the situation was very difficult: uh, uh, industrial decline, high unemployment, and low foreign investments. And the answer was a uh, regional innovation policy, which has been regularly updated uh, given to the results uh, how it was going. And if you looked into the results, uh, there have been 55 startups, uh, a lot of new employment, um, and there has been also investments in new research infrastructure. Uh, the uh, smart specialization strategy has been developed for the region. Uh, attract, uh, new excellent researchers have been attracted, and there is a cl clear vision in South Moravia that they want to belong to the 50 most innovative, innovative regions in Europe in 2013. Uh, oh, sorry. The, um, the presentation from uh, uh, on Vastra Götaland, I hope I pronounced it correctly, uh, um, started with the challenges in the, in the life science, uh, science uh, field whether where you have a large uh, a large number of challenges, um, but generally um, healthy population is needed, and the healthcare can be uh, used as an innovation gateway. Uh, there are a number of uh, barriers to innovations in the healthcare system, uh, which uh, uh, of which the most important are the attitudes and the mindsets. Uh, exploiting different kinds of ideas, uh, defining, uh, defining driving forces and intellectual property management, uh, the ability to cooperate with academia and industry, addressing societal challenges, uh, the laws, national and local, proper procurements, and uh, uh, there, is, there are many ideas but not so much commonization. Um, then, uh, and then the last one was the entrepreneurs who can realize ideas from healthcare uh, professionals. So, <clears throat> in the last uh, presentation, we had uh, the views uh, from the perspective of industry. Um, there was indicated that investment in biotechnology, uh, why it's done? Well, the two main reasons uh, stay ahead in competition, but also to finance future growth and also to. Uh, to uh, assure uh, its uh, future. Uh, secondly, what uh, the region is benefiting uh, in two main uh, aspects, direct employment uh, for highly skilled employees, but also in indirect employment, for example, via architects. But uh, last but not least, also the country profits uh, by the prospects of opening manufacturing uh, of biologic uh, and uh, partnerships with small biotechnical uh, firms, as well as interactions with uh, academic centers. In the discussion that uh, followed, we, uh, we've seen that good results have been achieved with structural funds in the uh, Wuch region. 
uh, the public health was considered as uh, very important. Not only well-being at work, but also well-being through work should be uh, said. And it was also mentioned that only a healthy uh, population can be productive. From the other point of view, it was indicated that economy uh, is a very important uh, driver that normally wins. But that doesn't mean that uh, there are more traditional or well-being issues are not important and can uh, have, it, uh, have their own role. Um, uh, and the last one was that Europe should, uh, could profit from uh, being the first in a certain area uh, where, uh, uh, where we are active. That would be quickly. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed, uh, Lucas, uh, because it's very well done and and, uh, uh, and delivered just in time summary of our of our session. It's very rare, to I remember. So thank you very much for this fantastic work. And uh, well, uh, we have still uh, two and a half minutes, I think. So really, we are well disciplined. I. Ending this session, I would like to, to, to propose my impression. My impression is that we are recently, we are facing, tackling, but mostly facing the challenges, the grand societal challenges, but there are more than challenges, I think. There, there are potential dangers for the, for the people, for their well-being, for, even for civilization. Yeah? So the great success of uh, this conference and this session, I think, is to show us that uh, we are quite successful in turning the potential danger, the, the challenges we face, to turn them into positive approach and future successes. So it's my best wishes to, to achieve that goal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for attending this conference. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, speakers, for the presentations. And thank you very much, Lucas, for perfect rapport, report of this session. Thank you very much.